Now let's take a look at another case where the mix, right, where we've taken our mix frequency and we said that our omega mix is now the carrier frequency minus that intermediate frequency. And recall, if you didn't watch the last video, right, we had this process which we said could transform our modulation from one frequency to another. So we put our modulated message at the carrier frequency into a multiplier with a mix frequency where the mix frequency is based on an intermediate frequency of interest. We mix them together, we get this multiplied wave, we put it through a bandpass filter, and what we said and we saw for the mathematical case was out pops a message that's modulated by our intermediate frequency. So we saw that for the, the first case, which was the um, omega C plus omega I, and now we're in the second case, and we're going to see that mathematically should end up with something very similar. So when we mix them, right, we again apply that trigonometric identity here. When we simplify this, right, we can uh, use the same identity that we used up here. We can simplify using this identity. We can apply this even property because when we simplify this, right, we have uh, omega c minus omega c that cancels, but we're left with a negative omega i. So by the even property, right, we are left with these two terms. And again, we have two cosine waves. So when we multiply these together, we get two cosine waves. One is at a relatively high frequency, right? Two times our carrier frequency minus the intermediate frequency, and the other is at our intermediate frequency. So in this case, we can see that the two times the carrier frequency minus the intermediate frequency, it's going to be a little bit closer to our intermediate frequency. Uh, and that, of course, will depend on how what, what you choose as your carrier and intermediate frequency. But Compared to the first case, right, that's we're going to have something that's further away. For the second case, we're going to have um, a higher frequency term that's maybe a little closer to our intermediate frequency. Either way, what we see is that we have two distinct terms. One is this purple term, right? These are the higher frequency terms here. And the second term, this is the one that we were originally interested in. This is our intermediate frequency. And they should be separated by some amount, right? You should be smart and choose a carrier frequency and an inter intermediate frequency that are separated by enough so that you have two distinct areas where your message has been modulated to. That way, when you apply a filter, again, so you apply your bandpass filter centered at your intermediate frequency, right, you can eliminate the high frequency components. You can eliminate this second sine wave. So either way, right, we had two cases, case one and case two. Uh, in both case one and case two, when we pass our modulated message through another mixer with these high frequency components. We can see that these high frequency components, whether it's the plus omega i or minus omega i, are going to be higher frequency than our intermediate frequency. Uh, so long as we keep this true, right? As long as we keep our omega c minus omega i greater than 2 pi b, where this b, right, is the bandwidth of our original message. This is the base band of our original message. And also, you must keep it such that the intermediate frequency is larger than 2 pi b. So we need to make sure that our intermediate frequency is, in fact, larger or above our baseband. So it should be uh, the intermediate frequency should be above whatever our baseband was, right? So if we have a baseband, this it must be higher than this. Uh, and it also must be um, the, the difference between these two must be larger than the bandwidth. Either if as long as you adhere to this, you will get a situation where these terms can be completely eliminated by our low pass filter shown here. So when we do this, when we force this together, we force these two waves together. Our wave at our carrier frequency is forced together with a wave at a mixing frequency. We can call that mixing uh, heterodyne. And that heterodyne word, it's it's kind of an old fashioned word. Um, it, it basically means two different things that are forced together. That's sort of where the name comes from, the heterodyne process. Two different frequencies being forced together, mixed together, is this heterodyne process. Um, and you can do this, right? We can view a nonlinear modulator, in fact, even as a, a heterodyne mixer. So just replace your original message with the modulated message. So instead of having just the message here, right, this was our original message input when we first looked at this nonlinear device, instead of having just the message, put the modulated message in as one signal input. 
and put your mixer in as your wave input. If you were to do this and then just change this output filter to a bandpass filter at the intermediate frequency, then you can view a nonlinear modulator as a heterodyne mixer. It forces these two waves together and using the bandpass filter, you get a modulated wave at your new intermediate frequency. Uh, likewise, you could use the ring modulator again as a heterodyne mixer, where instead of having just the message, you also add in your modulation. So you, instead of having the message by itself, just pass in the modulated message as your signal, pass in the mix uh, wave uh, as your controller for these diodes. And as long as you have that filter at the intermediate frequency, right, you're going to get another modulated wave at your intermediate frequency.